What is up guys? For this video we're going to be getting to the five lug swap on the rear end of the truck. I have everything here to do it. Got these 18 inch private wheels. These are the ones off the Eclipse. This is the pair of them that has good tires on it still. The other two tires are dry rotted really bad and that's why I'm not going to be doing the front on it. But I got the stuff to do the rears and my tires that are currently on the back shake and vibrate and they're just rough. So gonna be doing the rear first plus these are way wider than the tires that are currently on it it currently has 205 wide on it and these are 225 or 235 i'd have to check and make sure but it's one of those two got my axles which you guys have already seen for the most part these are five lug axles off of a 1988 dakota with of course an eight and a quarter inch rear end because early early dakotas were five lug and then they switched to six lug after so it's just stock axles and these wheels, which just happen to have the same exact bore size to match the hub perfectly. It's like a 71 mil bore on the wheels and a 71 mil hub on the axles. So I worked out really well, kind of a coincidence. And I got my 10 inch drums, which are for the five lug. I painted them already, so they won't rust, hopefully. Brake cleaner, because I'm going to be cleaning the axles off because there's some dirt and crud on them before I put them in. We got 7590 synthetic limited slip fluid of course got lug nuts because the regular lug nuts that are on here are definitely not going to fit and kind of see it's a little bit dark over here but the lug nuts are huge and they are not going to fit in that i actually grabbed these those of you who watched the junkyard video i grabbed these off of that mazda but these are metric and the truck uses the standard one half by 20 so i had to go to autozone and buy a whole set and then i actually have a couple extra from when i did Put these on my mustang of course the mustang was four lugs so i had four left over so i'll be able to put all these on the rear and then put all of them on the front as well and i'll actually still have two left over and i got a gasket up here for the diff got a new plug just because it might get damaged as i remove it or whatever to fill it so i went ahead and bought a new one since it's cheap and yeah that's everything that's needed to swap do a five lug swap on the back end of a dakota all you need is the five lug drums your axles and then you need a new diff gasket and fluid and stuff because you have to pull it all apart that's it and then you have to have wheels obviously to bolt up to it you can go ahead and swap the rear end to five lug it's really easy it's actually easier up front because you just have to swap the disc rotors out and that's it because the disc rotor and the hub are one piece so you just put new discs on it and make sure you have five lug wheels of course and then you swap it but i'm just doing the back for now like i said because the two tires on the other pair of wheels that match these are junk and I don't feel like spending $100 on rotors yet. So we're just going to be doing the back for now. Get some good tires. Pull those junkers off of there. Have at least decent tires front and back of the truck. Because there's brand new tires on those fronts. Which is the other reason I'm going to leave it six lug for a while in the front. Just so I can use those tires up a little bit before I go ahead and take them off also. I've got to get the truck jacked up first. Obviously on stands. And then pull the wheels off. Get the other drums out. And then I can start cracking the diff open, drain fluid, and start freeing the axles up. I really like this jack. This is one of the first like real big tools I ever bought. Because I had my Jeep and I needed something bigger than like the cheap $20 jacks, like like the little tiny baby ones you can buy at Walmart and whatever. I needed something bigger than that because obviously that wasn't able to lift the Jeep and that was when I bought this. This thing's helped me work on a lot of projects though over the years and it's still going. Actually these jack stands I've had almost as long if not longer than the jack. The old Duralast ones I've used as, I think I used these to paint the calipers on the Eclipse actually. That's where all the red paint came from. The only bad thing about this jack, though, is it lets the stuff down hard. That wasn't that bad. Okay. Time to get the wheels off. There goes one, never to return. There goes the other one. Let's see how easily these drums come off. Yep, easy. Spoke too soon, I guess. There we go. Wheels are off. 
drums are off. Time to go pull the diff cover off and then remove the little big giant pin in the center of the diff and axles will just slide out. I gotta get all the fluid out of it too, of course. I'm pretty sure that the drain plug is going to be seized up, so I'm just gonna loosen the cover, crack it open, let it all pour out of that. And once it's done gushing out of there, which won't take as long, we'll be good to go and start taking stuff apart again. At least I don't have to worry about breaking any of these. Knock on cover, I guess, since I had these out not too long ago. In fact, last time I was working on this diff, it was about zero degrees outside. Now it's about 60 or 70. It's in the middle of the night, by the way, in case you guys might not have noticed, but it's it's dark. Oh, I can smell that diff fluid. That stuff stinks so bad. It doesn't smell burnt. It just smells like shit. I'm going to take all of these off until there's just the one on the very top. And I'm going to loosen that one a little bit and crack this diff cover forward. That way it'll be a little bit of a controlled pour. Okay, do not want to pull that bolt all the way out. Need a screwdriver. Oh. There we go. There she blows. It looks really clean still too. I'll just let it drip for a little while. And then I'll take this cover completely off. And we'll start getting the axles out after that. It's still pouring out of there, but I will remove this cover. Oh. Oh, of course the gasket's not going to come off in one piece. All right. While that is finishing draining, I'm going to scrape the gasket off of the diff area axle whatever you want to call that get that cleaned off i will clean off the housing which is sitting over there in a container at the moment so it can clean itself off as well by then that should be pretty well dripped out and it won't stink as bad i'll be able to go down there actually it'll probably stink more but i'll be able to go down there after that and get that big pin out of the center of the diff and it'll free up the axles to come in a little bit and then I can get the lock rings out and slide them off. All right, I got both gasket surfaces clean. I got the diff cover here and axle over there. They're both all cleaned up. So now it's time to go and get the big pin out of the center of the diff and I may need to put the truck in neutral so that I can spin the diff around. This pin right here has a bolt somewhere in it. I think it's on the other side that holds it in. And I need to spin this diff around and undo it, pull that pin out. And then the axles will be able to come in further than normal. And I'll be able to pull the lock rings out of them and get these axles completely out. I guess that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in neutral, spin it around and start taking that out. I'm trying to figure out where I've had that bolt. I can see the pin. Get it turned around. Aha, right there. That's the bolt that locks this pin in. I just pulled that bolt out, this pin, probably have to hammer it out a little bit. It'll come out and I'll have to turn it this way so I hammer it out vertically. And then I can push the axles in, get the rings off, pull axles out, and slide the new five lug ones in. Quarter inch. Of course it's a standard. Oh, came loose. I think I have to take it all the way out because there's a hole in this pin that it goes into. There it is. That's a bolt that holds the pin in. Oh, wow. That was a lot easier than I expected it to be. There's the hole that that bolt goes into. Hopefully you can see that. Now, I'm gonna push the axle in. These little lock rings that hold these axles into place and that pin keeps them from sliding in and freeing up. But once that pin is out, I can push the axle in and 
remove the pin. It's being a bit of a booger. All right, I'll have to go and find that later. That axle is completely free. And I need to do the same to that one, which means I gotta come over here and push it in. That should be in far enough. Pop the other ring out. All right, that axle's free. There we go. Heard them both fall. Here's one. That right there is literally what holds the rear axle into one of these. We are at the halfway point. Everything has been removed. That needs to be removed. I'm gonna go clean some of the grease off of some of these items. And then once I get the grease cleaned off of the clips and that pin and the bolt, and then, cause there's gonna be dirt stuck to it cause I set them on the floor. I'm gonna clean those axles off as well because they've been sitting in my storage unit. They got crud, dirt all over them. And then it'll be time to slide those axles in and start putting stuff back together. I got the axles, the new ones going in, cleaned up. Got the hard version on that towel all cleaned up. Here's the old ones. You can see the new studs that I put in because they're all shiny. Those are the ones I put in because one was damaged when I got it and the other one was the one that had the wheel stuck to it, literally. Because if you guys remember, when I first bought this axle that's in the truck right now, it had a wheel trapped on it because the nut was totally stripped out. I had to have it torched off. So that's that. I'm going to hang on to these axles just in case. Who knows? Maybe I'll swap back at some point. I really doubt it because six lug sucks booty. But done with those, hopefully forever. But I'm going to hang on to them because they're axles and I have them. Same for the drums. I may keep these because they're brand new pretty much still. But yeah, I don't think I'm going to film much of the reassembly because it's exactly what I just did, just in reverse. Uh, I'll probably get back with you guys and I'm ready to put the wheels on. And we'll set it down, see how it looks like with a set of 18s instead of some rusted out 15s. Okay, everything is all put back together. It's going to be kind of dark down here and I really don't know how much you'll be able to see. But covers back on. We're full of fluid. I got all the axles and everything put us back in, the lock rings, the pin, the bolt, all that's back together, of course. Put cover on, filled with fluid. The drums are also on, so it's time to put one of the wheels on and get it bolted up and then set it back down on the ground. We'll get to see what it looks like with some fresh alloys on it. Well, not fresh, but fresher than that. Grab the lug nuts so I can actually bolt it on. go. First time it's had five lugs on it yet. Doesn't look too bad so far either really. And this opens my wheel options way way up. There's plenty of aftermarket five by four and a half wheels and the 70 mil bore is extremely common because most aftermarket wheels will have that very large 71 mil bore and they expect you to put hub rings in, which in this case, I won't even need to do that. So that's pretty cool. This thing's gonna sit a bit weird too because the front tires are slightly taller than these tires that are on the 18s. Not a lot, but they are a little bit different. And now we'll have good tires front and back. None of those dry rotted junkers. These tires are only a few years old. The other ones have some age to them, I think. And they're dry rotting pretty bad on the sidewall, which I didn't even notice until I pulled them off of the Eclipse because I don't think they were dry rotted when I put them on. Get these as tight as I can with the 3 8 because that'll help make sure it's seated right because if I go straight to the breaker bar, things might not seat right, of course. I think that looks pretty, I mean, it looks out of place, but at the same time, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, lighting's all screwed up in here because these lights are almost too bright. And I don't think it's, it's not daylight outside yet. But actually there's a little bit starting to poke through. So in a little bit, I'll be able to wheel this thing outside and let you guys see it in the light with the 18s on the back. 
So I think I'm going to finish getting the other wheel on, torque everything down, clean up, throw all the fluids and stuff out that I've got sitting in that pan, put tools away, I'll just get all cleaned up, ready to go, finish up in here completely, and then hopefully by then it'll be light enough that I can get this thing outside, let you see it in the daylight, and we'll get a little bit of a glimpse of what it's going to look like when they're on the front too. I think it looks pretty good. It looks so much better than these. So much better, and that's a considerably wider tread on the back as well, so that's going to be a big improvement. All right, it is daylight. Everything's done. Got all this stuff in the back of the truck to go to the storage unit. Look at that. This is the wheel with a giant dent, which you can see right there, but it looks good on there. It's going to look a lot better when the other one is up front or when the other two are up front. But I'm really happy with that. That wheel looks great. Black drum behind it was a good move on my part because otherwise it would look like crap after probably just a couple of weeks it'd start to rust. So that's going to look good for hopefully a long time. There's a lot of paint on that. Fitment isn't, I mean, it looks like stock fitment pretty much. So it's nothing wild. RT wheels would stick out like another inch if I decided to go that route, but I think this is gonna be a better option because finding extra sets of wheels will be a lot easier and cheaper, and I think these look a little bit better than RT wheels. And I don't need RT wheels because this thing's not gonna be used to pull or tow anything, at least not anything big or heavy. So I don't need real truck wheels on it at all. That looks good, I'm so happy with this. This is kind of a huge relief to have this part of it done because now I have new tires and the thing's a lot safer and better to drive and I just needed to get this five-leg swap out of the way for a while. I've been really excited to do it. I've been wanting to see what these wheels would look like on here for quite some time. And I think if I clean these wheels up, maybe get that dent fixed on these two and get, of course, the front done, I think they're going to look pretty good on there, even in their current condition. I mean, they're a bit rough, but, I mean, the whole truck is, you know, pretty rough anyway, so... Yeah, it's five lug swap on the Dakota, everything bolted in just like it was supposed to as a direct swap. Just used earlier Dakota parts, uh, axles and drums from an 80, I ordered parts for a 90 I think, but it's the same for the 88 which is what the axles came out of. Fresh diff fluid as well which is probably a good thing. That was it, just axles and drums and you can bolt them in. That was easy. That's going to be it for this video guys, I hope you have enjoyed this little swap hopefully this has helped a few of you who uh also have dakotas and are maybe having issues finding wheels that fit five lug swap five by four and a half you can run all kinds of different wheels that way and with that that's going to be the end of the video i'll see you guys later